Typically winter is a quieter time of year for Flandro State Park. This year we did see more snow than we typically have seen in the past, especially throughout the month of February. We were able to groom our six miles of ski trails several times. At the end of our ski season, we started seeing one of the rainiest March and winter thaws that we have had in recent years. It wasn't just a typical rain storm, it was snow that turned into rain and then rain that turned into more snow. At this point, we have removed a lot of snow, thanks to our heavy equipment operators within the department to clear areas that we could put up plastic and make a sand uh, and plastic dike to prevent the water from entering. So we're in the stage one of just prepping the facility and prepping the surfaces for that. According to the Weather Service, the predictions are that we could see historic flood levels again. They have a probability calculator that says the maximum we could see is between 22 and 24 feet, depending on how you read the graph. Um, last year we saw flooding of 19.6 feet, which gave us a good level of where we would get impacted. The 80s is when they decided we want to have our outdoor swimming facility back at Flandreau. And so a few groups got together to help donate the funds and raise them with the DNR to build that. The beach house. It's important in the entire infrastructure of Flandreau. A lot of work and German engineering kind of went into the style with the vaulted ceilings that we have in the great room. But it was one of the first buildings within Flandreau that was built to accommodate the dammed river that created Cottonwood Lake. And so it was nice to have an area for people to congregate right there as a central meeting point for the park. So it's just the big thing that everybody knows the park with is our German style of buildings because that's what the area was. And it's just to tell it's test of time and it's been iconic. After all park and trail staff had gone through the efforts of trying to protect the swimming facility from flooding, the ice broke at the most opportune time. The river was able to slowly go down about four feet after the ice broke apart. And after it broke, instead of having higher thawing temperatures during the day and evening, we had colder temperatures at night that allowed the ice blocks and couch sized chunks of ice from thawing, which really prevented a lot of the historic level flooding that we were expecting to see. we were able to start a lot of our spring operations as per normal um, in hopes of being able to repair and redesign some of our trails.
from the end of winter to the beginning of spring, we were able to start transitioning into summer use for hiking and running and just enjoying the greenery out and around us. We were lucky to be able to start filling the swimming pond on time and get it up and functional, even with the preparations for potential historic level flooding. Mother Nature was kind enough and we were able to operate as normal and not ruin our summer fun.